That's right, folks. I've decided to create a fully functional game server for my game completely from scratch. While there are plenty of ready-to-use, out-of-the-box solutions out there, virtually all of them are overly complex, packed with features that I don't need, and can be very pricey. That's why, in today's video, I'm gonna share how I came up with the idea of building my own game server, the technology I chose to develop it from the ground up, and the results I've achieved over the past month. So, stay tuned to learn more about the development process of my idol game Get a Little Gold. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Yaroslav, I'm an indie game developer from Ukraine, and over the last month my primary focus has been on creating a safe system for the game. If you think about it, as game developers we don't have too many options when it comes to creating a save system. We can either save players' data locally, which is simpler but comes with the risk of data loss or hacking, or save it remotely, over the internet, which offers players additional benefits like the ability to switch devices and still have access to their data. In the Flash version of the game, published over 7 years ago, I had my own implementation of a cloud-based saving system. It was incredibly basic and straightforward. I used the official Get a Little Gold website as a middleman between the game and the MySQL database. The game would send data to the website, which, in turn, saved it to the MySQL database. It wasn't the most sophisticated system in the world, but it got the job done. There was one major drawback, though. Every time the game attempted to save data, it sent a packet with a size of nearly 10 kilobytes, which had to be written to the MySQL database. And while it might not sound like much, consistently sending this data from hundreds of different clients put a considerable load on the server. At times, it got to the point where the administrator of my hosting provider contacted me, requesting that I address the constant traffic and database requests. My only solution at that time was to significantly increase the time intervals between game saves. I discovered that if I send the data once every 10 minutes, the server should be fine. However, this also meant that players could potentially lose up to 10 minutes of their progress if they logged out of the game at a wrong time. To address this issue, I introduced local saves that could be initiated much more frequently. The cloud saving system remained as a backup, so players could restore their save from the cloud in case they lost their local save. Now, as I'm developing the mobile version of the game, I'm determined to create a better and more efficient system that allows for cloud saving without the need for local saves. To achieve this, instead of using a website as an intermediary, I've decided to create a dedicated game server. This server will receive data from the game, process it and save it to the MySQL database. Unlike a website, this new game server won't make requests to the database every time it receives a new packet. Instead, it will store data, handle it and send it to the database at longer intervals, for example, when player completes their session and leaves the server. Furthermore, I aim to develop a system that will compare the data already on the server with that on a client and send only the data that has not been uploaded yet. Sounds complicated? Let me break it down. In the game, I have an array of all the learned upgrades with more than 200 true or false values, depending on whether a player has learned a specific upgrade or not. Every time a player purchases a new upgrade, the game updates only one value. However, with my old cloud save system, I would have sent the entire array and all other game data each time a save was initiated. With my new game server though, I plan to keep track of data already sent and send only the data that is not yet on the server. This approach should significantly reduce the size of data packets, allowing for more frequent updates. Moreover, unlike a website, an actual game server has the potential to handle more different tasks, such as managing player logins, running leaderboards, enabling players to exchange game data with each other, and much more. 
it might even open up possibilities for creating MMO features, like clans or group bosses, allowing players to interact with each other. However, the only task of this first iteration of a game server is to actually save data to the cloud and successfully retrieve it, essentially providing basic save and load capabilities. Now, when it comes to the technology, as a Unity game developer, I decided to leverage my knowledge of the C-sharp programming language and create a game server as a simple console application. I choose the console application because it's incredibly basic and lightweight, perfectly meeting my requirements. Additionally, it can be compiled to run on different platforms, which is especially important because I plan to upload it to an AWS Linux server. I'm not gonna delve too deeply into the technical aspects here, as I'm not sure if it would capture the interest of this channel's audience. Nevertheless, if you are eager to dive deeper into the specifics of game server construction, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. If there's a significant level of interest, I might even consider creating a separate video tutorial on building a game server from scratch. And now, let me show real quick what I managed to accomplish and how it works at the moment. We need to start our server, which we are doing right now. We are starting our console server. Uh, as you can see, uh, the server started, uh, successfully connected to our database. Uh, I'm using the local database uh, with XAMPP. Uh, as you can see, my SQL is already started and I have one record here i will show you real quick uh, this is uh, php my admin where we have this database and one record here uh, with id4 and now uh, when server is started i can try to start to launch my game which i'm doing right now i press play and uh, you can see here um, uh, the message that uh, user data loaded and number of gold collected is zero. Uh, the only data that I am gathering now and saving is uh, the number of gold I collected. So currently it's zero, but uh, when we take a look at our console, uh, we can see that um, a game is communicating with the server and sending uh, the number of gold every second. Now if I click on this uh, floating stone and see that gold uh, is 1, we can take a look at server and see that gold here is also updated, it's 1. Now uh, it's when I click can and receive sec my second gold, uh, you can see that here in the server is also updated to 2. But uh, it's updated only in this console server application, it's not updated on the MySQL database yet. Now, if we update MySQL database, we see that uh, the, the number of gold here is still zero. It's still zero. And um, to update this gold on the MySQL database, we literally should stop playing. So once we disconnect from the server, servers save every piece of data to the MySQL database. And let's let's like get another gold. And now if I close the game, if, if I stop it, I stop the game. Let's take a look at our uh, server, console server. We, we see here that this player has disconnected. And now when we update our MySQL database, we update it and we see that number of gold here is three. And when we restart the game again, Hopefully, the number of gold, yeah, as you can see, gold 3. So, as you can see, the basic version of the game server is up and running, handling data, saving it to the database when player exits the game, and retrieving it when the player restarts the game. My next steps include completing the game server, establishing the system for data comparison and efficient saving, and ultimately uploading the game server to the cloud. I really hope that I'll be able to accomplish all these tasks in the next few weeks. For now though, thank you for watching, 
Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this and see you in the next video.